Research and innovation in Futuris. The European Union imports huge amounts of metal, yet buried deep in Europe's bowels is a treasure trove of copper, zinc and other precious metals. Researchers have been digging deep to uncover ways to put European mining back on the map, and they're not short of ideas. Europe's deepest mine is seemingly unfathomable, at 1,430 metres. For 40 years, Pialsimi mine has been a rich source of copper, zinc and pyrites, but the countdown to its closure has already begun. We currently produce around 1.4 million tonnes of ore per year. But if the metal prices stay at the current level, we won't be able to maintain the mine beyond the end of 2018. Metal mining throughout Europe is facing similar problems. But scientists from a European Union research project are becoming a regular fixture at the Pihalsami mine in an attempt to breathe new life into an old industry. Metal resources exist in Europe, but extracting them is socially and economically challenging. Our research aims to develop more efficient exploration methods and also at imaging new ways to reuse mining waste materials to give European metal mining a fresh new impetus. Finding new ores in active or abandoned metal mines is the researcher's first aim. And that's no mean feat, especially for old, deep deposits. In Finland and also in Sweden, the, the bedrock is very old, it's two billion years. So the rocks has been folded and folded again, folded, moved. So something what you expect to have there might have been moved somewhere else. So it's, it's the, making the model is very complicated and follows some structures or follows certain rock types to two kilometers depth. Very difficult. That's why researchers have developed sophisticated 3D models. They're aimed at helping to better understand the complex geology that envelops the ore. What you see here in red are what we call reflective zones, underground regions, where the material has a different density from the surrounding bedrock. That different density is one of the properties of the ore that we're looking for. So these 3D maps help us to precisely spot those regions and calculate angles and distances for more accurate exploration drilling. But researchers have even bolder ideas to bring the luster back to metal mining, and they're more than happy to share them in open forums like this one in Poland. Swedish geologists have introduced sophisticated 3D underground mapping to make drilling easier. Diamond drilling is, is a very expensive business, so if, if you can more get robust models, so you, so you need less drill holes in order to target your mineralization, then you will reduce the expenditure needed to, to drill these deep drill holes. What, what we describe in a 3D model like this is the rock units, uh, structures which are, could be important for, for guiding where the ores are, uh, are located at in, in, in the crust. So, so it's all about, uh, you could say, chemical and physical properties of the rocks. French researchers, meanwhile, have shown the first ever interactive online database detailing the metal resources deep underground in Europe. And that's not all. Chaque gisement 
Each enlargement is represented by just over 40 fields in a database. So it's described in minute detail, its type, geological formation, but also the production, reserve and resource levels too. Then it does the same for mine waste. Why waste? Well, because the waste can contain substances that were rejected at the time because no one knew what to do with it or didn't have the technology to extract anything valuable. And now we realize that waste can be used for the components of your mobile, for example. Therefore, these so-called European-wide critical substances, some say they're strategic, others call them green metal, because they reduce the consumption of energy. And extracting waste is exactly what this German researcher is looking to do. He's developed a method to transform iron-rich mineral waste into materials for construction and painting. In this bottle, I have a typical example of mining shaft water, full of acids and sulfates. The only creatures that can live in this environment are bacteria that are able to oxidize iron. The idea was to use the bacteria in an isolated reactor to create the environment to control this process. At the end of the process, we have this material which we use to do several useful things. For example, we can produce bricks. We can also use this material to produce anti-rust paint. And Polish scientists have developed a method to turn nanoparticles from waste into rhenium, a resistant metal that, allied with other metals, offers multiple applications. We uh, produced uh, alloys of compounds, rhenium with, co uh, rhenium with uh, cobalt and rhenium with nickel. These are uh, alloys uh, for a very sophisticated applications in the uh, aerospace industry, for production of jet engines, for production of turbines operating in very demanding uh, conditions. Last but not least, these researchers want to develop new ways of greener mining. Poland is home to Europe's biggest metal mine. 11 million tonnes of mineral ore are extracted per year, including copper, silver and even gold. More than 2,000 miners work here every day. The mine is testing new ways to enhance mineral extraction in more ecological ways. First results, researchers say, are encouraging. We have also now bacteriological method to get rid of the acid mine drainage, which is so metal rich, and we are able now to extract these metals and purify the water to an extent that could be used perhaps for irrigation. And also to use the mining waste at the same time also cleaning the environment from these wastes. Of course, this is now just a start but I hope this will be the future. So European metal mining is coming back in a big way, with scientists at the helm ready to unearth a potential hoard of wealth from right under our feet.